Well, week five of our 12-week season, uh, and, uh, you know, it's one week at a time, and, and this was a, a really tough football game. Uh, so proud of the guys' uh, resolve in the second half. We got off to a great start in the first half, did a lot of the things that we had tried to do and planned to do, um, and got some explosive plays and get up a, a touchdown. It probably um, hurt us that we didn't capitalize on, on a couple of those possessions and get touchdowns. We only got field goals, but... Uh, um, they went for it on fourth and one at their own 40, I think. Um, that's kind of, kind of the thing we talked about the other day in the analytics. Um, we stop them, at least get three out of it. And so um, we're up 13 to nothing. And then we just played really poor in the second quarter. Uh, got out of rhythm on offense, didn't tackle really well on defense after tackling really well in the first quarter. Um, they started blitzing us all the time, and we couldn't get uh, uh, the ground game going. We couldn't get. Uh, Guys free. Um, Adrian was running a little bit for his life. And um, so I was a little upset. You can ask the guys, I was a little upset at halftime because I uh, uh, thought we let him off the hook a little bit. We could have been up big in the first half and we uh, lost some momentum. And uh, then we have a dumb penalty and, and they get a field goal before half and it's 13 to 10. And you're like, how in the heck does this game 13 to 10? Uh, but to challenge the guys uh, at halftime that uh, we were a better football team and um, that uh, we needed to rise up and show some resolve and somebody needed to make some plays. And we needed to um, you know, stand up in the second half and, and say, you, people aren't going to come in here and push us around at home. Uh, and uh, we played really well in the late in the third quarter and then all the fourth quarter. We were able to finally get pressure on the quarterback. Really good player. Donovan Smith's really good player. Um, and uh, Felix was able to get to him. Khalid was able to get to him. We were able to get him to turn the football over. And then, you know, I, I think the, they blitzed us so much, we finally found some creases. And when you do blitz like that, you do have a tendency to give up explosive plays. And we had a number of explosives, which we really needed to have because we weren't going to nickel and dime them uh, with as much as they were pressuring us. How good was Adrian in the running game? He was, uh, he was really good. Uh, I thought uh, our O-line blocked in the run game extremely well. And he was very patient. And when you do blitz and you crack that first line, um, there's not many kids that can catch Adrian. And uh, he had a couple of explosive plays. Deuce had a couple of explosive plays in times where we had to have it to flip the field. Is that more likely Duke what we saw today? Um, we we brought him a lot. I think you guys noticed that. We put him on the line of scrimmage and uh, let him do what, what he does really well. Uh, and then we also dropped him in coverage too to try to help at least some of our tendencies. But uh, I was excited because you know he had a big smile when we said you're going to get to go rush the quarterback today, and uh, he made some big plays. On defense, when you look at the stat sheet and see turnovers, uh, fumbles, interceptions, and sacks, what stands out to you most there? Um, the turnovers. You know, when you think we get them to turn it over four times, plus they went for it on fourth down twice and missed it, that's really like six possessions you get. Um, you know, we made some some mistakes. Uh, give them credit. Uh, I thought their kid made a great play on Echo. Echo's trying to fight him off. He one-hand catch. I mean, that was a big-time play by that kid. Um, but uh, we blew a couple coverages and gave up some seam routes that we can't have. And, um, you know, we... Got him into a few negative plays, which helped us. And, and um, you know, it was one of those things where 82 plays is a little bit too much for us. We played an awful lot of guys. You saw some different players. You saw Gavin Forche out there. You saw Dez out there. You see, saw Jacob Parrish out there. You saw a lot of different players. But when it was getting to that big of a play count, plus second half we were having so many explosive plays that uh, we were back out in the field. Well, was it pretty much just blitzing that took you a while to go from – yeah. Really nice offensive plays early to yeah. finally that, that, getting back around to it. That's the main thing is they, they started bringing the house. Coach, when Deuce Vaughn fumbles, gets hurt, yep. he's able to come back into the game, has those explosive runs. What's going through your mind? Just he, make sure he's okay and then uh, get him back in the offense and get him back, get him the football back. Um, you know, we've talked about it. Having those two kids in the backfield is, is a nightmare for defenses uh, because they both are home run hitters. They're not – you know, get six or seven, and 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 that's it. These both those guys, and and it's it's hard to defend us. And and we need to um, find ways when people are pressuring us that much to try to hit the home run on a pass play too. We just um, I, I don't know. We didn't we didn't do that, so we end up sticking with a lot of quarterback run game. And then you talk about the quarterback run game. Was that kind of an emphasis coming out of the locker room in the second half? Was to get Adrian more involved with play calling? I think it started more later in the third quarter. 
Um, you know, the first play of the game, we creased them on a big run, and then they changed their defense to that play. And then they started, and then we started hitting some short routes to Cade and, and Malik and Phil. And then they changed that and said, heck, we're just going to blitz you. And it just took us a while to get it uh, uh, figured out of, of what run plays were going to be successful. Three more sacks today for Felix. Also, straight the fumble, which I think tied to school record. Uh, just how well is he playing right now? He's relentless right now. He is really relentless. And uh, uh, it's fun to watch him go to work. And I think he appreciated Khalid being out there with him because I think it took a little bit of heat off of him. Uh, and when both those two kids are coming, sometimes we had them on opposite sides. Sometimes we had them on the same side. Um, and uh, uh, those two together are pretty dang good. Felt like Austin Moore had a heck of a game too. Yeah. Uh, what's he done for you guys this year? He's been great. You know, he uh, he's just kind of a steady player. Uh, makes tackles, doesn't make mistakes. Um, we knew we had to find a way to get him some plays off, and we've been pushing Gavin Forche from a rep standpoint in practice. He started out as a Sam backer. We moved him to Will backer late in fall camp, and feel like we finally have. Uh, Gavin up to speed that he can play, um, whether it's 10, whether it's 20, whether it's 30, uh, plays a game, uh, and he's getting a lot better, and he's helping uh, getting Austin some rest. Coach, after Adrian played so well in Norman, how great was it for you to see him play well here in front of the home crowd? Uh, I was excited for him, um, and, and it wasn't easy. Um, th th this defense is, is big. They're physical. They run well. Um, it's hard to sustain blocks on them, and uh, I, I think him – Getting the explosive play um, got him into rhythm, and, and I was excited for him. It's the first time in school history you've had two players with back-to-back 100-yard -back performances, which is pretty incredible to think about. And are we just seeing the beginning? Is the Big 12 just seeing the beginning of maybe one of the top – tandems and in, in the league? Well, I didn't know that they had 171 and 170. Uh, that's a pretty good day that they had. Uh, and I know they had a good day last last week. I didn't realize it was this. Uh, we rushed for 343 yards against a really good run defense, guys. These guys weren't at, weren't letting anybody rush the football against them. And uh, you know, for us to be able to rush the ball that well, it's a credit to our offensive line, to the play calling, and, and those guys being patient in their runs, and then not getting frustrated with things that weren't working. And and then we found ways to get get some explosive plays, and then they hit them. If I could just ask, from your vantage point, what did you see on uh, Adrian's 69-yard uh, run? Uh, I, when the play call came in, you know, I was hoping we could get him to the second level. And then I saw the look, and they were pressuring. And once he got to the second level, I think it was just he and Deuce running together. Mm -hmm. And um, he can pick him up and lay him down. I think you guys all saw that he's got a, he's got a second gear. Even on the one play that we got called back for holding, that was a big time play, and he cut it back, split a couple of guys, and ran. And then, unfortunately, we had a holding call, and everybody wanted him to run again. When he was scrambling out, the kid had just ran 80 yards, and and I think he was just trying to get it dumped off. But uh, now he's a special talent. Coach, from a perspective of the defense, I know you guys gave up a lot of yards again, and you said that you didn't want to give Texas Tech that many plays, but. Has the play of your defense through the first five weeks maybe exceeded what expectations you had for them entering the uh, season? No, not at all. Uh, we have high expectations, high standards on defense. The players would tell you that. They're probably more disappointed that we gave up uh, uh, 28 points and whatever, 400 and some yards. But I promise you they're more excited about the win than they are the yards. And uh, uh, they also, and Coach Kleinerman and the staff do a great job of emphasizing the positive, whether it's the sacks, whether it's the forced fumbles, uh, whether it's the interceptions, whether it's the fourth down stops. You know, this was a team win, guys. It was uh, an exceptional team win where offense picked up the defense, defense picked up the offense. Chris Dennett came in uh, and made some big kicks. It was a, uh, a great team win. And then your secondary continues to seemingly play well. I know that you gave up a little bit more passing yards than you wanted to today, but what kind of play have you seen out of guys like Josh Hayes, Julius Brents, Kobe well, Savage? Over we're the last playing. Weeks? We're playing well in the secondary. I think we can play better. Uh, and you know, make no mistake, that, that's a good offense, and we faced really good passing offenses the last two week and two weeks, and we're going to continue to face really good passing offenses. So we're going to be challenged every week in the secondary. And when you're getting pressure like we're getting. With some of our guys, I think it's really impactful and really helps the secondary. But uh, I, I'm pleased with the way we're playing in the secondary, and I think we can play better. 
Coach, at the end of the game, Julius Brinsky said interception was a long delay afterwards. Did you ever get any input from the officials I, I on what didn't. that was about? I, I, I didn't. Um, I, I didn't know if they thought there was an inadvertent whistle. I don't know what happened. Uh, and then the long conversation on their sideline, you know, they don't give me any information on that. They just kept saying they're continuing to go to replay to see if it was an interception. And I thought it was pretty obvious that it was an interception, so it was taking longer. Uh, but, uh, you know, even at that point, we needed to get a first down. We needed to get a first down. They still had all their timeouts left, uh, and we needed a big first down and happy that we were able to get it so that we could get into the best formation in college or NFL or high school football victory. Did you ever have a, get a chance to talk to Eli Huggins or KT Leveson about their injuries? No. Nope. On film, did you see that kind of accuracy from Donovan Smith that you saw today? At times, yeah, you bet. Uh, he's gaining more confidence as a quarterback, uh, and they have some really good receivers. And I like their backs. They've got a they've got a really talented offense, and you can't pack everybody up to stop the run. They're too good at receiver, and you can't play everybody back. They're too good at running back. So it's a really good offense that's going to cause a lot of people a lot of problems. I've asked you this before, but how key is the cornerback play for this team to your overall defense? To the cornerback play, That's yeah, we, we need to be able to. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, <coughs> I choked on some water. <coughs> um, we have to play man coverage, for sure, um, <coughs> for our defense to be successful. We have to play man coverage, and we challenge those guys an awful lot by playing man coverage. And you know, you got to understand you're going to give up some plays. Um, but uh, you know, Echo gave up a big play and then came back and made a big time play. I think that was on a fourth down where he knocked the ball away. So, you know, you, you got to be fearless out there when you give up a play. You just got to come back and be ready to play the next. Coach, defensively, you guys gave up the yards, um, but you turned the ball over a few times. How do you build on that? Um, use that just, going forward. We emphasize the heck out of it, getting the ball on the ground and, and interceptions, and um, you know, bend but don't break. At times, they're going to make plays. There's good offenses in this league, and you've got to find ways to get stops. Coach, big picture, it was your 25th. Oh boy, in the country. here you go. Don't. <laughs> T. Scott, 25th in the country. The guys just want to go one and no each day. What did this team prove today? Uh, great resolve today when things were starting off well and then then had a lull and uh, very resilient group. We rose up and like I told the guys, we got to empty the tank one more week uh, before we get a break. And um, we're going to go play a really good Iowa State team in Ames and, and we've got to put all our chips on for this week and then we'll get a chance to get a rest. You know, I was happy he came in and, and did some things and, and came in at a couple of critical situations where we moved the chains or got an explosive play. I can't remember when KT went out, um, but I know Dawson played a handful of snaps and uh, excited to see him uh, get some snaps there. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.